And we welcome you to Journey into Faith, brought to you every week by the Bible Speaks in Laconia, New Hampshire, USA. Wherever you are in this world, we again greet you and thank God for each one of you. Tonight, I'll be preaching on this subject, Victorious Christian Life. What is a victorious Christian life, and how can we live it? Stay tuned. Right now, we're going to have the first of two singers. This is Bob Eli, and he's going to be singing and playing for us How Deep the Father's Love. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turned his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring men sons to glory. <clears throat> Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know paid my ransom his wounds have paid my ransom how praise the lord how deep the father's love for us thank you bob now we're going to have eugenia clark sing a beautiful song that all of us can thank god for it's called Amazing Grace.
Thanks, Eugene, a wonderful song. I'm going to read from the scriptures tonight, from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Please stand in reverence for the word of the Lord. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Jesus Christ is he who died. Yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Just as it is written, For thy sake we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who lo loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As Pastor Horn comes forward to preach this message titled victorious living grant that to us in jesus name i pray amen thank you bob you may be seated how important it is to recognize there is a victorious christian life god has shown us in the scriptures how people receive that and wouldn't it be wonderful if we could live above the clouds in the heavenlies or on the mountain top? But God says, even though you could live up there, you must remember what I teach you in the valley experiences. We have all kinds of tragedies, sorrows, temptations, failures that come against us. But God says, and we referred to it this morning, my grace can be your sufficiency. He does not say, I will take you out of those trials, those tribulations, but he does say, I will be with you in those trials and tribulations, and you will make it because of my being with you. Remember what he said to Peter when Peter was going to go through all kinds of trials and tribulations. He said, I have prayed for you. God is praying for each of us as we go through our trials and tribulations as well. The grace of God can give us power to put on smiles when inside we are going through all kinds of turmoil and tribulation, pain. I have seen people smile knowing that they were going through terrible, terrible situations in their families and in their physical lives. You would not know they're going through those things because they put a smile on their face. They want to minister Christ to people and not constantly draw attention to themselves and what they're going through. But you know, you can see, it's clear that they're going through difficult times. But as they go through it, they're serving God. They're smiling when they're hurting, when they're crying inside. 
Many people have said that some of the world's best clowns were sad people inside. They put on the face for the public because that's what the public wanted. But I can tell you this, God looks upon the heart of an individual. While I may be smiling on the outside, God's looking on the inside and ministering what is needed to keep me from going into all kinds of problems. In the sixth chapter of First Timothy, Paul points out several things that can cause us to have victory in our lives if we heed what he says concerning our lifestyle. Paul says, as he warns Timothy, I want you to retreat from certain things. I want you to flee from certain things. I want you to run from certain things. God is saying there, I want you to flee from the traps of the devil. The devil would have us think negatively. Run away from those traps as if you were on fire. Because if he gets his way, you will be burdened to an extent you will not enjoy. Flee discouragement. Flee discouragement. Don't just walk away. Run as fast as you can from discouragement or from a discouraging word. Many people say things that they shouldn't say to each other. Run from that. Run from that. And you don't run from it by dwelling in it. You run from it by telling Jesus Christ, show me how much you love me. And he will show you from the scriptures. God intends that we should have victory, and victory in every area of our life. The trials will come. The problems will come. But God says, I want you to think beyond those problems. For the joy that was set before Jesus Christ, he endured the cross, despising the shame. What did he see beyond the cross? You and, he, and me in heaven. He see, saw my sins forgiven, and God the Father then invited me into the presence of the throne room because I received Christ as my Savior. He saw beyond the pain, and he saw beyond the crown of thorns, and he saw beyond the scourgings, and he said, I put my heart and mind on the joy that would come because I obeyed the Father. Beyond everything, friends, put your mind on the things that will come because you're obedient to God the Father. You're living a Christian life and you're doing what God would have you do even though all the dots of Satan are being thrown at you to stop you from doing that. Put on the armor of God and you will be a very sensible individual. God is able through the Holy Spirit to give you the same kind of a life Paul had, even though Paul had to endure the troubles and trials, he had a joy that caused him to sing at midnight. He had a joy that so caused him to go on serving God in terrible situations, never giving up but trusting that God would carry him through. He knew that God was going to be the last word in his life and the eternal word in his thinking. God, through Paul, Paul the apostle, told Timothy, I want you to run, I want you to flee, I want you to leave certain things alone. And what are some of those things he said to Timothy to leave alone that we had better leave alone as well? One of them was pride. Pride. You and I have to lose our pride to gain the will of God. If my pride stands in front of me and I won't do certain things because I want to maintain that pride, it will hinder me from doing the work that God has for me. 
Remember the old saying, only one life will soon be passed. What we're going through now is not even something we should consider as important compared to the eternal blessings God has prepared for those that love him. The scripture says that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. I am a servant. You're a servant. I'm a worm and no man. You're a worm and no man. That is a terrible thing to say, you say, about me. I remember a dear, dear saint of God that was in this church years ago hated the phrase, amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. She didn't want to be called a wretch. Well, I had a sense not to call her one because she was a scrapper. When she got mad, great woman, but a scrapper. But I can tell you this, she was a wretch, I'm a wretch, and Jesus stooped down to save us. Compare yourself to Jesus, and I tell you, you'll feel like crawling into the dust when you compare yourself to the Son of God. We are wretches, but we're wretches that God loves with an infinite love and has saved by his grace through his atoning death. All that we have is of God. You think you have achieved things in your life, and it hasn't been so at all. God has honored you by giving you things in your life. There's nothing in pride that you want to hold on to. It's all Jesus, all Jesus. People will come to me at times and they want to honor me, so they say, you're a great preacher. I'll tell you this, I'm not a great preacher. I've got a great God that speaks through me. I will not take the honor any more than any servant of God will take the honor. They know that if God stopped anointing them in a moment, they would be useless. Even Billy Graham said that of himself. It is God's grace that has used any one of us. It is God's grace that has saved any one of us. It is all of God. And God is looking for faithful people that will endure to the end even though Satan throws everything possible toward them and, it, and actually affects them in their lifestyle. I remember telling my wife's father as he's laying on his deathbed, getting ready to meet the Lord, I said to him, oh, finish well, finish well. And that's what I say to each one of us. Finish this life well by serving God and following God and not giving up on God. Though a hundred arrows, a hundred dots are thrown at you by Satan, do not stop serving God. Don't let him distract you from the will of God for your life and for the plan of God. We are to live lives of humility. The scripture does not say that we are to pray for humility. It says we are to humble ourselves. We have to choose. It is God, and I will give the praise to God. Not a false praise, but a praise that comes from the heart to God Almighty. Second, Paul mentions envy to Timothy. Envy is jealousy. The scripture says, jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare him in the day of vengeance. God can't work through a person that's jealous. Somebody in the church does a great job and somebody else gets jealous of them and doesn't like them because they're getting the attention, they're getting the praise. All you have to do is let God use you so that you can receive the praise of men because God is working through you. It isn't that they're more blessed. It's that they're doing what God wants them to do, and he blesses them. So don't be jealous of them. Serve like they are. Serve like they are. Jealousy. 
jealous because someone else receives more attention. The scriptures say that jealousy is sin. Look what it does in a marriage. It destroys a marriage. Look what it does in the church. It destroys the unity of the church. It is something that God says is a sin and it can destroy and it can cause great disruption in the plan of God for those people. Thirdly, Paul tells Timothy to flee from strife. Flee from strife. Strife is caused by anger, bad temper, and irritability. You've never been irritable, have you? That causes strife. Don't look at other people. Look into your heart and see if it's you that has got this problem. So many times we can think of people that have the problem and say to ourselves, I wish they were here to hear that. No, I'm here to hear it. You're here to hear it because God has a message for us. It's not someone else in need of prayer. It's me, O oh Lord, that's in need of your working in me. There is strife inside of people, frustration, fear, all kinds of problems and difficulties that cause war to go on inside. Have you got a war going on inside of you and it's killing you day by day because you have not had the peace that passes all understanding? Watch out. Go to God. Get it dealt with. God knows the suffering that is going on in the hearts of his people. God knows the suffering of fathers and mothers because of a wandering boy or girl Terrible, terrible suffering, but they need to trust God for them. I'm reminded of a lady that used to be our song leader here, and she's been praying for her wayward daughter to come back to Christ, and all the reports never are encouraging, but she's still on her knees praying, Oh, God, save my daughter, save my daughter. Do you know the cure for strife in the home? A family altar. If there's strife in your home, kneel before Jesus Christ together, and God will take care of that strife. For, fourth, he says to Timothy, railings are another one. Do you know what railing is? It's abusive language. Are you abusing your, your uh, husband or wife? with your language anything negative is abusive language and you need to deal with that that can cause great problems not only in the home but it will affect your time in the church one of the secrets of christian living is a dedicated spirit filled tongue whatever edifies whatever builds up use that in the home and see if God doesn't do miraculous things. Fifth, Paul mentions evil surmisings. This is thinking evil about somebody else. Don't easily take these people that would say something about someone else and it would cause you to think evil toward them. Don't easily let them get away with that. Say, well, why don't you wait until this person's here and we'll talk about it with them right here. No, they're not going to do that. They're cowards. They want to do it behind the back of the individual. Don't talk negatively about people unless they're right there and they can speak for themselves. He says, don't let that happen. Sixthly, Paul mentions the love of money. You say, I don't have money. I don't love money. You sure do. If I take an offering three times in the service, you're going to complain. Because of what? Because not because you're giving to God, but because I have to give another offering. That, that usher always shakes the thing until I give something. It's terrible. Yet it becomes a love of what you've got not a love for 
something you haven't got. You love it, and you won't give it to God. You won't tithe to God because you say, I'm giving in another way. No, you're not. You're robbing God. You're robbing God. And God says to Timothy, watch out for that. The rich young ruler couldn't get saved because he loved his money more than he loved God. Seventh, flee youthful lusts. We are living in a sex-crazed age in the history, the worst perhaps, because there's all these computer ways to get it in the entire world. Things that take place today would shame Sodom and Gomorrah because there's so much worse. And God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of what was going on. Morality was terrible in Sodom and Gomorrah's day. And it's there now. Friends, these are things that God said to Timothy. Eighth, the Bible says we are to advance. And this is where I conclude. Grow in grace. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Get close to him and these things will not become a problem with you. You will be able to walk in the light of the truth of God's word and you will have, you will have victorious Christian living. Trust him, and it will be very evident in the way you smile and in the way you act. Let's pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for the direction you gave to Timothy. And Father, how important it is that we receive that same direction from you. And not only flee these things, run away from these things, but whatever else you have stated in the word of God that is not good for us. Help us, Lord God, to flee to you and to let your word dwell richly within us. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I'll not stop any program without asking you to do that. Let Jesus Christ come into your life and you will find that's your beginning of victorious living. God bless you until next week at this time. You can let us know if you receive Christ by writing us at 40 Belvedere Street. The Bible speaks 40 Belvedere Street, Lakeport, New Hampshire, zip code 03246 or emailing us at rhornet2 at metricast.net. Until next week, God bless you.